Please join me in welcoming tonight's student speaker, Katie Heinemann. First off, I want to say thank you, parents, graduates, members of the faculty, and the CSE Student Commencement Speaker Committee, thank you for not only putting up with me these past five years, but also allowing me the opportunity to speak to you today. Both my resume and I thank you for this amazing opportunity. But that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Over these past three to seven years, we've all done big things for our resumes. And I'm sure that as graduating scientists and engineers, we're feeling a bit caught up with and defined by what is on that limiting piece of paper. I actually never thought the University of Minnesota would be on my resume. For me, it, becoming a gopher was more of a lucky accident than a planned life experience. When I applied, I don't even think I put my full legal name on the application. Literally could not have been a sketchier applicant. So in addition, I would like to thank the Office of Admissions for seeing my potential and letting me in. <laughs> no, in high school, when I was applying to college, what I really wanted to do was to become an Air Force Falcon at the United States Air Force Academy. For most of my senior year, I spent my evenings and weekends hitting the weight room, getting ready for my fitness test. I studied extra hard for my classes and interviewed with my state senators to secure the nomination. After months of hard work, my acceptance packet arrived. The folder felt thick and heavy in my hands, and never have I felt such a strong feeling of accomplishment in my life. I ripped it open and immediately sent in my paperwork to attend the pre-commitment orientation. During that long weekend in April, I shadowed a current cadet who showed me around campus and gave me a taste of what academy life was like. I watched distinguished graduates speak about their experiences and met some of my future classmates. When the weekend ended, I knew the academy was not the place for me, and I felt an overwhelming sense of guilt and failure. I realized that what I wanted out of my college experience was the chance to grow and develop as the person I wanted to be. I wanted to choose my major and how to spend my summers. I wanted to have the opportunity to make dumb mistakes, be a little rebellious, and maybe even find some love. So you can imagine that after realizing that this goal I'd worked so hard for was not what I wanted, I came home demoralized. 20 years earlier, my father had been rejected from the academy, and I wanted to prove that the Heinemann family was worthy of that acceptance. I was supposed to want to become a Falcon. I was supposed to want to make my parents and my community proud. Just before the May 1st deadline, of my college solidifying my college choice, I remember sitting at my kitchen table between the decision about that I was about to make. The two acceptance packets, one from the academy and the other from the University of Minnesota, sat in front of me, and I cried. I cried because I knew what choice society expected me to make, and I knew what choice I wanted to make. That day I made one of the hardest decisions of my life. I chose the path that was right for me. I chose the University of Minnesota. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> From that experience, I realized that making the right choice for me is not always easy. If I was to follow through on what I thought I was supposed to do, instead of following my gut, I would not be, I'd be graduating a shy Air Force Falcon who I am sure would not have had the confidence to address this large of a group of people. Hey, Mom. <laughs> but really, I am glad I became a gopher. As a gopher, I learned the value of vulnerability and growth mindset. I had the summers off of school so I could work as a research assistant for NASA or as a backcountry EMT in the mountains of New Mexico. I traveled to Israel and Jordan with Professor Marshak. And for those of you who know Marshak, that was one heck of a good time. 
<laughs> and most importantly, I was able to work with some of the best first year students a person could ask for as a community advisor in the residence halls. It definitely was not the Air Force resume I had planned for, but it was the one that was the right choice for me. And it has allowed me to grow and develop into the person I wanted to become. I made the difficult decision to become a gopher, and you all have done the same. You consciously made the choice to overcome whatever obstacles threatened to keep you home. You found a way to find time to study, pay for college, and be involved in extracurriculars. You survived Physics 1301 and 1302. Clearly, you have the capacity to follow through on the commitments you, want, you make in order to become the person you want to become. Some of the best advice I've ever gotten is from a mentor I had while working at NASA Glenn. He said, never be afraid to say yes, because you don't know where it might lead. I have found this advice to be worth applying. In February, I was invited to attend a conference called Creating Change, the National Conference on LGBT Equality. On a whim, I said yes and accepted the invitation three days before it began. I drained my bank account. You probably understand that feeling. <laughs> but in doing so, I had an amazing opportunity to learn more about the disparities between those who are privileged and marginalized in our society. As educated people, we hold a lot of privilege, and it is our job to bridge that gap and work towards a world where everyone has the opportunity to live the authentic life they want to lead. But sometimes, I hold myself back from saying yes by making excuses. I don't have enough time to help with this project. Women aren't smart in this discipline. My GPA just isn't high enough. I myself failed material science the first time through. But I came back, <laughs> clearly. I came back knowing, knowing I could fail again. I did it even though I lacked confidence. I did it even though I was uncertain. All of our classes, our labs, our lectures, our discussions, have taught us to figure out the unknowns. That's why we exist as scientists and engineers. But failure has taught me that there will always be unknowns. And so it's OK to not know what's coming next year, next month, or even next week. It's OK to try something new, something you may not be good at on your first attempt. It's OK to look beyond traditional paths and use our science and engineering experience in a field that does not regularly entertain these types of graduates. I myself want to use my engineering skills to eventually pursue a career as a physician. As J.K. Rowling put it best, life is difficult, complicated, and beyond your control. There is no way your resume can truly capture the depth of the person you have become. And I want to tell you all the same thing I need to remind myself. We are enough. We are more than enough to become the people we want to be. And we alone have the power to write the story we want to write. What we perceive to be failure can actually lead to the resilience for which we as CSE students are known. And so it's OK to make difficult choices, to fail, to live unconventionally, and to make your story more than your resume. In life, people will stand in your way. But remember, that people are intrinsically good and generally want to leave a positive impact on the world. Sometimes they just need someone who is willing to listen and seek to understand a little bit something about their story. Don't worry so much about your specific path to success. I became a gopher. And in doing so, I learned that that statement could not be more true. As my good friend Emma Contreras put it, I was not put on this earth to eat, sleep, buy crap for myself, and die. And graduates, I'm positive that neither were you. 
you were put here to do so much more. So go for it. Model resilience, make difficult choices, and write a life narrative that is so much more meaningful than those limited words on your resume. Congratulations, 2015. We made it. Thank you.